Hello, good afternoon. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Again, this is Mr. Santos Repella Jr. Always wishing you a good day. Guys, what I'm having here is my air cold chillers, okay? Now, actually, in my previous uh, video tutorial, I gave you an idea that actually that is part one. I gave you an idea how this uh, air cold chiller works, okay? Now, actually, there are three basic major components for this system, primary pumps, chillers, and the secondary pumps, okay? Now, uh, today, I'm going to do the part two, but uh, this will be covering the primary pumps, okay? Now, uh, as you know, primary pumps, uh, this will be the one that is pulling back the chilled water supply to the building load, okay? So this will be my main chilled water return line, okay? Now, let me go to the primary pump graphic uh, page. Actually, I created another uh, graphic page dedicated uh, to primary pumps, okay? So this is my... Uh, chilled water primary pumps, okay? So I have included here runtime set point, okay? So I have uh, used here a 500 hour set point, okay? Now for the sake of simulating the operation, I use the minutes, okay? So as you can see here, my pumps are already running. This pump two is running at around 439 minutes, okay? Then pump three, likewise, it's 393 minutes okay then my pump one is 100 now uh, you will see the uh, run hours are not the same for uh, these three pumps because i'm trying to sequence it uh, in a daily basis okay so meaning uh, actually the scenario here is two pumps duty one by standby uh, one unit standby rather okay now guys uh, as i said when you are writing the control logic program okay now you will always uh, base your control logic program on an approved sequence of operation. Never write your control logic program without basing it in the sequence of operation, the approved one, okay? You cannot write a control logic program as you wish. You always look for the uh, approved sequence of operation where you can find it in the uh, mechanical specifications, okay? Maybe in the uh, equipment schedule or the mechanical equipment schedule, you will be able to see the chilled water requirement there and you can find there an initial sequence of operation where you can follow it, okay? Now, guys, here, what I have done here, I tried to write a control logic program based on a, a two-duty, one standby, okay? So here, uh, to be able to simulate the operation of this, actually, this is very useful to new uh, mechanical engineers or new uh, BMS engineers who are wishing to join in this field, building automation. Okay? Now, this can be used also by uh, BMS operator or BMS technicians or also the BMS foreman. Okay? Now, uh, here, uh, if you are going to prepare the graphics for the primary pumps or for the chill water system, okay? Now, actually, you can uh, create a separate graphics for every major component of the chill water system. So uh, here, I will, I'm having here the primary pumps, okay? Now, what are the information that you need to uh, show in your graphics? Now, uh, as per my experience, I always uh, show them the run hours, okay? Because this is important in the maintenance people because every maybe this pump, uh, of course, it is not a maintenance free equipment. It needs maintenance uh, schedule, okay? So maybe the uh, chip engineer or the maintenance engineer that will handle this uh, project he will be needing uh, preventive maintenance schedule for the mechanical equipment. So these run hours will help him to schedule the maintenance because maybe you need to lubricate the pumps bearing, okay? okay. Then do some uh, adjustment, okay? So these run hours will help the engineers to decide when you are going to do the preventive maintenance, let's say uh, during, uh, let's say the pumps run uh, runs at around 500 hours, okay? My set point is 500 hours here. Then it will, re, re, with the, the system will raise a 
run time alarm. I have here reset, comma, RT alarm. Okay, so I have the reset and the uh, alarm. Now, as you can see, all these uh, alarms are normal. There will be a runtime alarm here if the run hours of a pump will be equal or greater than 500 hours. Okay. Now, to make it more flexible, now I need, I, I uh, use here as uh, this increase and decrease spinner. Okay. So that you can raise it. So I make it uh, 50 steps. So every time you press the up arrow, will increase by 50 okay so we can put it back to 500 okay now uh, uh, as i said if the pump runs 500 hours then there will be a runtime alarm okay that will be the signal of the bms operator that needs to be relayed to the maintenance people okay guys you need to do the preventive maintenance okay now if you have a software because there is some BMS software that will automatically create a maintenance job order, okay? So it will be better if you have this kind of software also, okay? Now, uh, what else, okay? Now I have here also the trip status. I have the normal, okay? So I have a trip status column here. Then I have also the hand of auto status, okay? This is very important, okay? So hand of auto, trip, run hours, runtime reset and runtime alarm then runtime set point okay now uh, basically these are the most uh, important points that you need to show in your bms graphic that will help the maintenance people okay now guys i prepared here as i said i my uh, my control logic program uh, i try to sequence the pumps on a daily basis okay so every day there will be two pumps running okay so every Monday, there will be a set of pump that will be serving the uh, chilled water requirement of the building. Okay. Now here, as you can see here, chilled water primary pump through, this is my weekday simulation. So weekday simulation, if this one is true, I will follow, because I want to simulate to you, that's why I, I will put it. If I will put it to false, okay, I will put it to false. Now it will follow the day, in my system okay so today is monday okay that is monday okay so monday pump one and pump two is pump two are running okay pump one and pump two okay now okay i don't want to wait till next day so my pumps will change okay so i need to uh, do something okay so that i can easily simulate the changing of days but actually i can change also here in my system change the date okay but i don't want to do it there okay i want to do it here now okay i will make today let's say it's tuesday so tuesday uh pump two and pump three will be servicing okay then let's see if it is wednesday three now pump one and pump three will be in service during wednesday then Thursday, it will be, again, it will go back to pump one and pump two. Then how about Friday? Friday, okay, the same, okay. Then uh, Saturday, okay, so pump two and pump three. Then Sunday is pump one and pump three, okay. Now, so actually, uh, by doing this, uh, this style, you will also be able to uh, provide an equal wear and tear in the pumps. Okay, you want all the pumps will be having the same, almost the same run hours. Okay, because we want to provide uh, equal wear and tear in all our mechanical equipment. Okay, now uh, I'm now it's Monday. Okay, now so pump one and pump two are running. Now, uh, of course. Uh, your control logic program should be capable of detecting what is happening in the field, okay? So let's say pump one trips. What will be the response of your control logic program if pump one trips? Okay, let's say, uh, of course. Now, as you can see here, guys, I'm trying to force the uh, point because I don't have the control 
panel for this big system. So I need to for some of the points so that I can play with the status. Okay. So I have here my uh, PP1 primary pump one trip status. So I'm forcing it. I'm saying it is off. Now I will say, okay, I have a trip in pump one. Okay. Now, as you can see, I have a trip indication here. Okay. Then based on my control logic program, my pump one stops, then the standby unit, which is pump three, kick in. Okay. So that is the scenario when pump one trips. Okay. Now I can try to remove the trip in pump one. Okay. Cost based on my uh, control logic program, pump one and pump two should be running during Monday. So when the trip is gone, again, pump one will come back. Okay. So let's say, how about it? Pump two trips. Pump two trips. Okay. Let's say pump two trips. Okay. On. Okay. Now it trips again. The standby unit, which is pump three, will kick in. Okay. Automatically. Now there's a trip condition here. <clears throat> okay. Now let's remove it. Let's remove the trip again. Okay, it will go back to pump one and pump two. Okay, so uh, that will be the response of my control logic program if there is a trip condition on the uh, duty pumps. Okay, now how about if someone, let's say someone, is in the site? and your maintenance people are visiting the site looking for some uh, of course even though there's a building management system you cannot leave the equipment uh, from time to time someone should be roving and looking for the unnecessary things in the site okay now actually when i was in jeda i was doing also this uh, maintenance i was part of the maintenance now I have to go from time to time to check the chiller yard, go to the mechanical room, check for an unusual event in that area, okay? So let's say the maintenance guy go to the chiller yard and he noticed pump one is uh, making unusual sound. What he can do instead of calling the BMS operator or the building management system room, BMS room, and notify the operator, he can put the selector switch and off, okay? So you can turn off or remove the equipment in auto position. So let's say, let's simulate that scenario, okay? Okay, so someone remove it in auto, okay? Again, my standby pump kicks in, okay? So meaning, uh, as you know, in building management system or building automation, BMS, uh, or our DDC will take the control when the equipment is in automatic position or auto mode. Now, if it is in manual mode, again, based on the control logic program, those points are being considered in our control. Okay, when it is not in auto, I, wa I will remove my uh, command or I will remove my control to that equipment. So that is what is happening now. So pump three, the standby unit kick in, okay? Now again, if we will put it in auto, of course, it will come back because based on our Monday schedule, pump one and pump two is running, okay? Uh, this is the uh, routine or the setup for daily, uh, daily routine, okay? Uh, of course, there will be another approach for sequencing the pumps, but here I did it this way. Now, guys, this is a easier way of sequencing the pump, okay? Because if you are new BMS engineer, maybe if you are not really uh, very good in programming, then you can just you can just use this approach, okay? Now, if you are a, really a good programmer, then you can have your own approach in sequencing these three pumps, okay? So again, that will be the uh, scope of this video tutorial. How are you going to rotate the pumps to uh, have an equal wear and tear in the three pumps? Okay? So I'm doing it in a daily basis. Okay? So guys, uh, I think my graphics, uh, having this kind of graphics will give you, or the operator will know exactly what is happening in 
the primary pumps, which pumps are running, and how long these pumps has been running. Okay. So guys, uh, I don't think I need to explain for there because as you can see, the, okay, the main return line, uh, the pumps, primary pumps are sucking the chilled water from the uh, from the building load. Then it will be fed to chiller. If you have, right here, I have two chillers. It will be fed to the chillers. Then my secondary pumps, my secondary pumps will be the one to uh, deliver the chilled water requirement to the building load. Okay, now that will be my uh, next video tutorial. Okay, so guys, uh, again, uh, uh, I'm doing the control logic program and posting it for the members. Okay, uh, they will be the one to see how is these things will be uh, is program. Okay, so again, if you are new to my channel, you can always uh, support this channel by subscribing. You can click the like or you can like uh, share and of course you can click the notification bell so that you will be notified for my next uh, video tutorial okay. so once again uh, thank you for joining me and i do hope in my own little way i'm helping new mechanical engineers or new engineers who are wishing to join MEP company. MEP company is the one doing all the mechanical, electrical, and plumbing job for a specific project. Okay. So if you want to be a part of it, then you need to have an idea what are the equipments involved in this uh, company. Okay. So again, thank you for watching. And Santos Capilla Jr. will always end the tutorial by saying, uh, This is all. Let's all be safe and bye for now.